delayed laboratory results are one of the biggest rate limiting steps in any emergency department workup. Usually it's from a missed specimen tube or a hemolyzed result, and your overworked nurses try and do their best to get a repeat specimen, but sometimes you need to help. Sometimes messing around on the computer isn't the answer. Every ER physician should know how to pull lab specimens off an IV line, and a surprisingly large number don't know how to do it. Yes, it's basic, but it is not beneath you. I'm going to show you three ways to do it. First, it's a myth that you can't pull good specimens off a small IV. You'll see I'm using a 24 gauge IV for everything. Put a tourniquet above the IV site. Then, put in a vacutainer in the end of the hep lock, like you see here, and use a vacuum tube like a type and screen to draw back some waste blood. This will draw in any diluted blood that was mixed with saline that was used to flush the line earlier. You can't use this blood for a chemistry or CBC, but you can use it for a type and screen if you need one. Draw out about 3 mLs of blood and then set this tube aside. Now you can start plugging in your regular tubes, which will collect undiluted blood you can send straight to the lab. Once you're finished, make sure to remove the tourniquet and then flush the line so your IV doesn't clot off. Sometimes the vacuum on a specimen tube is a little too strong and the negative pressure causes the vein to collapse shut. In these cases, you need a gentler intermittent form of suction to get some blood off that line. So put the tourniquet on as always and consider removing the HEPLOC entirely. Put it on an alcohol prep just to keep it sterile-ish. Then attach a 3cc syringe and gently pull back and forth on the plunger, kind of like milking a cow. Discard this first syringe. This is your waste blood. And then do the same with a second syringe. This will be the blood that you use for whatever lab specimen you need. How do you move the blood from your syringe into the lab tubes? Just pull off the top from the specimen tubes, then squirt the blood in and then stuff the top back on. Your lab people might not love this, but air gets in specimen tubes all the time when you're using a butterfly or transferring blood in other ways. It really doesn't make a difference. Don't forget to reattach the HEPLOC and flush the line. The last and slowest method is the drip technique. This is for veins that are so small, even a tiny amount of suction makes the vein collapse. Basically what you do is disconnect everything except for the angiocath, let a few drops of blood go to waste, then pull the top off a lab tube and hold it under the angiocath hub. Blood will often passively drip into the tube. It takes a while and it can be messy, but it works. Normally, I would just stick the patient again instead of using this last method, but it is handy for infants or hospice-oid patients where the family is vehemently opposed to additional needle sticks. As before, put the top back on the tube and flush your line, because if you don't and you let it clot off, you'll look like an idiot. <laughs> 